what is Dolby Atmos? Dolby Atmos is 3D audio. But for those of you who are familiar with multi-channel surround sound since the beginning, this is not what you remember surround sound to be. Atmos is a sound engineering marvel which requires a bit more explanation to understand how it actually works. It is not as simple as just adding a couple more speakers for Heights channel and calling it a day. It goes beyond. Now let's kick off today's session with a brief explanation of surround sound in its original form. So what is surround sound in its original form? Now first surround sound appeared in 1980s, but it wasn't 5.1 yet. It was only 1990s that we really got 5.1s and that's the true start of true surround sound. So let's start with 5.1. This consists of the front stage, which is left, center and right. There's also the surround, so that's the side or the back surround, left and right. So that's another two channels for a total of five. So what is the point one? Well, the point one is the sub. So that makes the total of 5.1, six channels all together. The original Dolby surround sound formats were specific to the speakers. One channel means one speaker. If the track has six channels of sound, it required six speakers. There was no further processing on the AV receiver to decide which speaker to play the channel on, it simply routed the channels to the respective speaker. At the mixing stage, it takes a good sound engineer to mix in the sounds to the channel so that it comes out convincingly through a speaker that it was meant to come out of to create the whole sound stage. So let's take for example, a car going from the left to the center and finally exiting to the right of the scene. The engineer will first mix in the sound at 100% left, nothing in the center and nothing to the right. The engineer will then mix in the sound at 75% left, 25% center and 0% right. Following that, the sound engineer will then mix in the sound at 25% left, 75% in the center and 25% right. And this gives the impression that the car has reached the center of the sound stage. Now to move the car off the screen to the right of the sound stage, the sound engineer will first mix in the sound at 0% left, 25% center and 75% right. The sound engineer will then mix in the sound at 0% left, 0% center and 100% to the right. So when it's at 100% right, like where my wife is most of the time, 100% right, you will get the impression that the car has now reached the right side of the screen. Now each of those channels or speakers, they are simply playing back the sound from the mix. There was little if no processing and decoding that's happening when it comes to channel allocation at the point of playback. So what is Atmos? Atmos works differently. The first thing you need to understand is that channels are no longer tightly correlated to speakers. Atmos soundtracks are object based, meaning to say the sound engineer is deciding where the sound object is going to be in relation to the sound stage. So instead of designing the sound for the speaker, the engineer is coding into the soundtrack where the object of sound is. So in the previous example of the car moving from the left to the right, it codes into the track, the object and the movement of that object from the left to the right. The Atmos decoder, which is the heavy processing part, then deciphers that information and based on the number of speakers it has at its disposal, plans out which speaker should get what level of sounds. Now basically, the Atmos decoder is doing the job of the sound engineer at the point of playback. Because at the point of coding the object information, the sound engineer does not know the number of speakers the system has. In fact, an Atmos system can have up to 118 speakers. So Atmos' ability to handle more channels and speakers is not limited by the number of channels that is encoded with, rather is limited by the decoding processor. So the top shelf consumer grade AVR will almost all be Atmos ready as of 2023. 
but the differentiation that sets each budget aside is the number of channels it can process and subsequently drive. Now, as I've mentioned, the sound objects are not allocated channel at the point of coding the sound. It simply states where the sound is supposed to be. The decoder, depending on the number of channels it can process and the number of speakers it has at its disposal at the point of playback, then decides which speaker to play that sound object from in order to simulate the effect of the sound being in that specific location in the 3D space. And yes, instead of just a two-dimensional sound stage of just front to back and left to right, Atmos adds heights as well. So you can have a top to bottom placement of sound, making it three-dimensional. So recall the example of the car that we used earlier, but instead of using a car, we will use a helicopter. Why? Because Tom Cruise. Every modern day movie will find any opportunity to add in a helicopter to the movie. It is one of the chances to really show off height effect. Now you're not gonna get much height effects when watching shows like 50 Shades of Grey, unless of course when she's on top. So let's bring in the helicopter. Now let's make it a little bit more complex by having the helicopter take off from the ground on the left to flying overhead above you towards the rear right. Okay, that might sound a little bit more complex than what I imagine it to be. But to the sound engineer working on the soundtrack, all he needs to do is to place the helicopter's roto sound object on the front left ground level move it to the top in the middle above you as it lifts off and then flying off to the rear of the sound stage to the right. The hard work of decoding and allocating the sound to each of the speaker is then undertaken by the decoder at the point of decoding, which is the Atmos AVR that you have. So to simplify it for you, the front left channel will play the roto sound and as the heli takes off and moves above you, the decoder will then pump less of the sound to the front left and more of the sound to the center speaker. The overhead speakers first on the left overhead and then moving slowly more to the right overhead speaker at the same time playing more sounds to the surround speakers. Now at this point, the sound could be coming out from almost all the speakers, but the sound engineer wasn't the one mixing it. It is the Atmos decoder. And finally, to show that it's leaving the scene, the levels at the rear surrounds will then take over all the sounds from the front stage and the heights speakers will slowly fade away. Now all the above are happening in real time and the scene is probably just a second or two long. Now it would have taken traditional channel-based surround sound engineers countless hours to mix it channel by channel, but the Atmos sound engineer simply codes in the sound object's movement through the 3D space. Now if you have more speakers, the Atmos decoder will then have finer control of over where the sounds are coming from. For example, you can have five, up to eight heights channel for consumer grade home theater setups and up to 11 channels of year level setup coupled with up to four subwoofers. Now, if you have a receiver that is capable of decoding that, then each of the channels can be controlled by the processor. Just imagine the sound engineer having to code for those 23 speakers. Not quite possible, right? So Atmos is the real sound mixer here, managing all of these in real time. So you might now ask, what does all this mean for soundbar? So for those of you on my channel, you're likely to be using some form of wireless audio in soundbar formats rather than discrete AV setups with bulky speakers littered around the room. Most soundbars today license a form of Dolby MS processing from Dolby and they are capable of processing multi-channel sounds. But more often than not, they are virtual. Meaning to say, there aren't actual speakers for each channel that it is processing. The number of drivers are not correlated to the number of channels it can process. For example, the Sonos Arc on its own has 11 drivers. That's three tweeters and eight woofers. Well, that doesn't mean that it has 11 channels. In fact, far from it. 
it does have left, center, and right, and two channel surround sound processing, which uses the side driver to simulate surround. So that's five channels. Now on top of the arc, it has two physical drivers to throw high channel sounds. So that's seven channels altogether. Atmos decoder within the arc will decide which driver to sound off in order to simulate 3D surround sound objects and its placement within the 3D space. The Sonos Beam Gen 2 is also Atmos capable, but it uses only five drivers. There are no physical drivers on the Beam Gen 2 for the upward firing channels. It uses psychoacoustics to simulate the heights channel, giving the feel of heights. Now, this is what Dolby calls height virtualization. So, it is clear that the speaker's layout doesn't match the surround sound format exactly. You can say that the Sonos Arc is a 5.0.2 system and the Beam Gen 2 is a 3.0.2 system. Now, it is not about the number of drivers or the speakers that it has. It is about the number of channels it can process. The Arc soundbar has a center, front left and front right front firing speakers, that's 3.0, and then there's a surround speaker on either side, so it makes it 5.0, and you have two more upward firing channels for the Dolby Atmos, which makes it 5.0.2. The Beam Gen 1 is a little bit more straightforward with center, front left, and front right speaker layout. As mentioned, although the Beam Gen 2 has the same number of speaker drivers as the original Beam Gen 1, the upgraded array arrangement makes it more like a 3.0.2 speaker system with additional Atmos surround sound audio, even though the number of drivers have not technically changed, but it is now able to process the extra channels. So at this point, it is important to differentiate the various forms of Atmos. The main difference is the heights channel or the lack of actual overhead physical drivers for heights, having to resort to year-level drivers pointed upwards to reflect sound off the ceiling, like, for example, in the case of the Sonos Arc, and in the case of the Beam Gen 2, even simulating the effects using Atmos virtualization. So as you can see, the compact form factor of most wireless audio products, even if it is Atmos capable, it might not actually deploy actual physical drivers to deliver heights audio. Now this is even though it is actually capable of processing more channels than it has drivers. So the most important thing to note from today's lesson is that the speaker doesn't equate to channels and channels doesn't equate to the number of speakers. Processing is not about the number of speakers, it is about the number of channels. So far, we have not talked about subwoofers. Now, Dolby Atmos specifies up to four subs to be connected and controlled independently. They are not placement specific. TruePlay can take care of the face and placement but for individual processing, you will need to set the crossover independently. But that Sonos doesn't allow for. So even if Sonos can pair up to two subs, they are technically treated only as one. The Sonos Arc with ERA 300 and a sub is a 7.1.4 system, not a 7.2.4 system. The dual sub is not making it a X.2.2. X, just one crossover. So I hope today's session has been useful and you have found a better understanding of Atmos and its capabilities. I will see you in the next podcast.